अच्छा वी वर डूइंग ऑपरेटर्स जस्ट जस्ट अ क्विक रिकैप ऑफ ऑल द ऑपरेटर्स दैट वी डेड सो फार वी टॉक्ड अबाउट बीकर कॉनिकल फ्लास्क दोस वर टेस्ट ट्यूब्स वी टॉक्ड अबाउट अबाउट इक्विपमेंट दैट वाज यूज्ड फॉर मेजरिंग द वॉल्यूम ऑफ अ लिक्विड सो यू हैड अ मेजरिंग सिलेंडर यू हैड अ ब्यूरेट एंड we learned how a burette is used uh we talked about a pipette and uh then we learned how to make solutions and what was the role of volumetric flask uh and then we started talking about heating substances i told you about uh, strong heating you use a bunsen burner and we talked about gentle heating which was over a water bath and uh if you want to mildly heat something and there were other substances like electric heaters and uh, and crucibles that were used so crucibles were i mean these were these were specifically used for strong heating uh if you're strongly heating something you use a crucible uh now uh, a few more apparatuses uh, that we would uh, talk about uh, we can talk about uh, uh, a spatula ठीक है ना ना मोस्ट ऑफ द मेन वंस वी विल ऑलरेडी वी ऑलरेडी डन विद द मेन वंस सो वी वी जस्ट गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट द स्मॉल लिटिल ऑपरेटर्स दैट वी हैव सो सो लेट्स टॉक अबाउट अ स्पैचुला व्हाट्स अ स्पैचुला दैट्स बेसिकली द इक्विवेलेंट ऑफ अ स्पून ठीक है दैट्स दैट्स व्हाट अ स्पैचुला इज यूज्ड फॉर इट्स बेसिकली अ स्पून uh so you want to transfer some solid you use a spatula uh this is what a spatula looks like it's a, it's a now what is this just a second so anyways they were they, i mean they're all kinds of shapes uh, uh hopefully i said this is like chemistry lab just one second because you might be given an image and you might be asked to identify that so this is kind of what what a spatula uh looks like so i'm just going to put paste it over here uh then you have then you have a stirrer as well and it's uh, the stirrer is usually uh, a lot of times i mean that's uh, what it what it's used for it's used for stirring substances it's usually just a glass rod most of the time uh so maybe they might give you so it's it's kind of i mean this is i mean the electronic stirrers as well uh so it's just a glass rod that's it uh not much to it so I'll, i'll just leave it there uh just a just a glass rod for mixing substances uh what else uh, how do you how do you measure temperature uh, that's obviously a thermometer think that's that's kind of obvious so that's a thermometer uh usually uh, no one uses uh in a school laboratory no one uses an electronic thermometer it's usually the no- the normal one i said then ab- apart from uh apart from a uh, temperature um, what else we've got a retort stand so that's that is for uh assam neko i said that that one is for for holding uh holding burets or pipettes or whatever you're trying to hold uh mainly it's used for holding a burette so uh, i'll just give you an image uh you might be asked about a retort stand in the chemistry lab you might be asked to label it so a lot of people if you have visited the chemistry lab you would have seen this so i'll just i'll just copy this so it so it has it has clamps and those clamps are uh, used for holding different things 
uh, a lot of time it's just a period that you're trying to hold. Uh, and I can show you a retort stand where the beard might be. There might be a picture over here. Uh, yeah, actually, there is no. Just one second. Let me add beard to the search. So this is, where is it? So this is a retort stand holding a beard. That's it. So all all kinds of shapes, uh, but it's just a simple stand for holding things. Uh, so that's a retort stand. What else? What are, what other uh, type of thing? We can talk about weighing substances. Uh, for weighing things, you've got two things. There are two ways of weighing substances. Uh, one of them, I mean, the more common one that's used now is an electronic balance. That's it. I mean, this is the balance that you use, uh, that you usually find at the shops as well. Um, it's a simple uh, thing which has a base and it, it's giving you some readings, that's it. Uh, so it's usually accurate up to two decimal places. So so it, it will be giving you an output and you'll be putting things on top of it. So that is what a weighing, ba weighing uh, an electronic balance looks like. Uh, the other one is the other one is a, is a beam balance. It's the old ones. Like if you went to a shop in older times, you had this uh, you had this beam balance for weighing, which used to look something like this. Uh, you put weights on one end, so there are all sorts of shapes and sizes. So you put weights on one end, and you uh, measure the mass of the substance at the other end. So this is more like a more precise weighing balance, a more accurate weighing balance. But these are not used anymore. It's mostly electronic balance. So I, I don't think they're going to ask you anything about this. Um, so this is about weighing substances. And uh, we pretty much we're just going to have a quick look at, uh, at the apparatus over here just to see if we had missed something. Uh, we're pretty much done with most of the thing. There's one thing that I think we uh didn't do and that's uh i mean you should know about tongs uh i'll just i'll just write a few words about tongs over here and then we can move on to separation separation techniques so so i'm just i'm just going to talk about tongs uh tongs are used for for holding substances that are really hot most of the time uh so for holding apparatus or transferring apparatus when it's hot. Like if you want to heat a test tube, you're going to hold the test tube with a tong. So that's that's about it. So we're pretty much done with the uh, most things. I'm also going to talk about one other thing that that I can see that we haven't done and that's a that's a, a round bottom or flat bottom flask TK usually is just referred to as a round bottom flask so this one we didn't talk about this is also used for heating uh, for heating for heating solutions or any substance. So what you what you do over here is that you have a you have a round bottom flask. So it's kind of it's kind of like a uh, a big flask, and uh, you can hold it with you can put it or uh, hold it on a retort stand. So for example, there's a retort stand, and that stand would be would be holding the substance. Just a second. I said, so one second. So the apparatus would be held with the with the retort stand. Uh, there might be a clamp at the end which would be holding the apparatus and you could put a Bunsen burner at the bottom of it. So the Bunsen burner would be providing all the heat. 
and that Bunsen burner, I mean, that's how you, you're going to heat a solution. So the round bottom flask is kind of used uh, uh, a lot of times for heating solutions uh, in large quantities. Plus, there's another one, which is this one. That's also important, which you should know. Again, it's a, it's a, that's known as a motor in a pestle. Uh, I'm just going to rewrite it if you can see it properly. Motor in a pestle. So this one is used for grinding substances, like crushing. It's used for crushing or grinding. Like if you if you if you're given an experiment, and you've got leaves, and you have to turn it into a solution, uh, or you want to, uh, you're given seeds, and you want to uh, crush them to uh, to make oil. So for crushing substances and for grinding substance or making them into powdered form uh you use a motor and a pestle TK, that's uh i mean you, you you can find it in your kitchen as well uh so it's a thing for grinding substances leaves etc uh or if you have a salt crystal and you want to break it into tiny pieces like if you have if you have a big NaCl crystal and you want to break it into tiny pieces you're going to crush it using a motor and a pestle the motor is the is the big round thing it's the container and the pestle is the thing that you hit it hit it with TK. is this clear to everyone all of this yes sir TK. yes okay so so just a brief i said remember right now uh i mean we can we can do uh we can probably do a small worksheet on this as well. Uh, but remember, the usage of your apparatus and what apparatus does what, that's very important and it's going to be applicable in almost every topic. TK. In every topic, you'll be using different devices in if, if it's related to an experiment and you should know everything about your apparatus, what is used, what's the weakness for some apparatus, when, what would you use to measure volume. Uh, as a, and uh, and again, I'm really sorry. I just missed something that was very important. I think we did not do gases. TK, that was something very important. So I don't see that we haven't, we hadn't done gas correction. So let's talk a bit about, about gas collection. So how do you, how many different ways are there to collect a gas? Now, uh, two of the ways, I mean, the first one is known as upper delivery. So what do you exactly do in, in upper delivery? Now it's a, it's a gas collection method for light gases. So the gases need to be lighter than air. Lighter or less dense than air. Uh, and the method is that what you do is, uh, the method, the simple method is, what you do is uh, you take a gas jar or a gas is like a magic uh, cylinder. So let's say that's there's a gas jar, and what you're simply going to do is you're going to take the uh, the pipe or the tube through which the gas is coming in, and you're going to take it and and you you're going to place it this way, so that when the gas comes in, this is the gas that's coming in. And the gas particles would get trapped over here because light gases, uh, they travel upwards because they are low density, they rise. And uh, they're going to get trapped at the top of the gas and that's how you're going to collect them. So all the gas particles which would be coming in, they are going to get, uh, they're going to get, get trapped at the top. Uh, so that is for gases that are lighter than air uh, because the other gas that's present, that's air. I mean, air molecules are everywhere. For example, these green molecules are air molecules. So the air molecules are everywhere. And because the air molecules are heavier, they would all settle at the bottom and they won't allow the red particles to escape, the light ones. 
the light particles would not be able to come down because uh, the bottom part would be occupied by air and air is heavier so it's going to be at the lower part and uh, the red particles which are lighter they would be at the upper part okay is this clear Sareem, Amna, is this clear? Turan? Yes. Yes, sir. Uh, so then, um, lighter than air. Now, what what is air? That's that's a question. Like, lighter than air, it's a relative term. Uh, you've got air everywhere. Now, what is air? Does anyone know what the composition of air is? Any Different idea? Gases. Hey, but what gases? Like, mainly what gases? Oxygen, so is hydrogen, it... car carbon dioxide, methane. Tiga. So isn't seventy eight percent nitrogen, twenty one percent oxygen, and then one percent is other gases? Tiga. So it's uh, it's air is seventy eight percent nitrogen. So it's a mixture of gases, but it's uh, it's mostly nitrogen. Like uh, seventy eight percent is like four out of five. That means for every five molecules of air that you're breathing in, four of them are nitrogen molecules. Uh, and there's 21 percent oxygen so that means out of those five molecules only one molecule is oxygen uh n2 is the inert part it doesn't really react much so i'm just going to give you some brief idea of what air is uh oxygen is the thing that uh the whole chemistry of life is revolving around because we are breathing uh i mean that one molecule out of five molecules that we are taking in which is oxygen that's what we survive on that's what pretty much everything survives on uh, and most of the reactions that are happening around you they are, they're also happening because of oxygen like combustion like uh, uh, other reactions like rusting so a lot of th things happen because of oxygen nitrogen is the one that's inert doesn't do much uh, one person there is other gases So there's a separate topic air and water we're going to just study this in detail as well one person other gases in which the third most abundant gas is actually argon carbon dioxide comes a lot later uh, i mean it's it's, it's probably the, at the fourth or the fifth number so air is mostly nitrogen and oxygen so when we say that the gas should be lighter than air so what we basically i mean we can we can uh, sort of ignore the one person other gases and we can just focus on nitrogen and oxygen so what is what is the mass of nitrogen and oxygen uh, in the pure table n2 is 14 plus 14 that's 28 and uh, oxygen is 16 plus 16 that's 32 so if you take out the average uh, because according to the percentage, percentages, uh, out of every five molecules, four of them are going to be nitrogen molecules. The average mass comes out to be 28 and 32. That comes out to be around 29. So when we say that the gas should be lighter than air, so when we say that the gas should be lighter than air, what we basically mean is it should be lighter than 29. That's, that's the average mass of air. TK, is this clear? TK, that's the average mass of air. Yes, and, sir. Uh, the second one. I said now, now uh, the problems with this method is that you can collect the gas, uh, but you can't really measure the volume. I mean, it's it's kind of it's going to be very really tricky to actually measure the volume because uh, you not you won't be sure at what point because the gas particles are constantly in motion. So so you won't be sh sure okay, what point is the red particles filling. So can't really measure the volume. And you won't be able to measure the volume of gas because gases a lot of them are, are invisible like if the red particles are a hydrogen gas let's assume they are hydrogen gas now h2 is a very light gas and it has a molecular mass of two according to the pure table so if the red ones are h2 you can't really see those h2 molecules you can't you can't even see air molecules so so if you're in the lab and you're trying to collect gases you wouldn't be able to see anything that's happening I mean, you you would know based on your understanding of uh, light gases and heavy gases, you would know that the gas jar would be filled with hydrogen gas. But uh, since you wouldn't be able to see anything, 
so you can't even tell when it will get filled or uh, how many hydrogen gas particles are filling it up because you can't really see anything uh, so so it's it's a pretty bad way of collecting gases and uh, can't really do much you can't really measure volume of the volume of the gas tk is this clear yes sir yes sir I said then uh, the other one that's downward delivery. That's that's the exact opposite. Uh, okay, so everything applies to that as well, except for that one is for heavy gases. So that one is for gas should be heavier than air. That's exactly the opposite. So it's got to be heavier than uh, 29. Okay, that's, that, that is what it should be heavier than. And again, it would be impossible to actually measure the volume. So I'll just quickly draw the apparatus. It's uh, here's a tube, delivery tube coming in and that's, and here's your gas jar. So a heavy gas, which is heavier than air, would settle at the bottom. Okay, most of the particles would settle at the bottom. And the lighter air particles or relatively lighter air particles would, would occupy the top part. Uh, and that's how you're going to collect gases. So heavy gases, uh, example would be carbon dioxide. You can collect carbon dioxide this way. And uh, the whole issue that since you can't see any of the gases, you can't really, you can't really measure the volume. Now, the third method of collecting gases that's uh, that's over water. So that's the third one. Uh, that's over water. What you would do in that in that case, I'll just I'll just. Uh, Simply copy an image, just one second. Collecting. So this one over here. TK, uh, let's do this one. Now this one is gas collection over water. I mean, you can, you can ignore the uh, uh, the apparatus over here. I mean, you can simply ignore that. Uh, so the gas is basically coming from somewhere. And the gas bubbles through the liquid or the solution, whatever the solution is. And the bubbles will eventually get trapped in this gas jar, in this inverted gas jar. And the gas particles would eventually fill this thing up. Now, a pocket of the gas that you're trying to collect is going to form inside the water. And more and more gas comes in, the pocket becomes larger and larger. So you can actually see the boundary exactly. Uh, initially, this level would be right at the top because there is no gas. Then eventually the gas starts occupying this space and the space keeps on expanding. So you would see a larger and larger space and you can exactly measure the, it's good for measuring the volume of a gas. Uh, TK, is that clear as well? Awaaz aari hai? Asida, Salama. Okay. So, so it's 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 uh, volume of gas can be measured in this case because it's clearly visible. Uh, like at what point? Uh, or what space is the is the gas occupying? Uh, the drawback for this is that you can't really uh, measure or collect gases that are soluble. Not suitable for gases that are soluble in water. For gases which are
which are soluble and the example of such gases is uh, you've got uh, HCl I mean that's a gas that's that dissolves very quickly you've got ammonia that's also very very uh, soluble you've got uh, carbon dioxide which is kind of partially soluble like in your carbonated drinks like Pepsi and Coke you basically have carbon dioxide that's dissolved in the solution so carbon dioxide is partially partially soluble so this is uh, gas collection over, over water and then the fourth method is uh, the fourth one the fourth one is a gas syringe use a gas syringe now using a gas syringe is so let's say the tube is fitted to a syringe and the syringe has a movable piston so it's uh, it's it's got this movable piston and this piston keeps on expanding as more and more it keeps on sliding it's a movable piston it keeps on sliding as more and more gas particles they enter uh, so you have more and more gas particles coming in and the gas particles would exert a pressure and they would move the piston back and a gas syringe is usually graduated it has a lot of uh, it's got a, it's got a lot of uh, graduations in it tiny graduations and you can exactly uh, you can exactly measure the volume of the gas in this case so it's it's probably one of the best methods of collecting gases so uh, you can measure value, volume accurately and any gas could be collected so it's suitable for for all gases uh, not just a few gases like uh, over water that would not be suitable for soluble gases uh, downward delivery would not be suitable for light gases upper delivery would not be suitable for heavy gases so you've got four methods of collecting gases TK so is this clear to everyone everyone yes sir I so said then uh, just a second I so said now we can what we can do is we can uh, since we have learned a lot about uh, a lot of different apparatuses uh, there would be still some more apparatuses coming in like condensers etc which we're going to study in separation techniques so we're going to start with a with a separation techniques and there would be a number of separation techniques that we're going to study uh, specifically when we talk about separation techniques we're basically talking about mixtures TK, what, what are mixtures when substances are only physically mixed together and they're not chemically combined so substances are physically mixed together and then not chemically combined Plus, the other thing is that they, uh, a physical method could be used to separate them. You don't want to do a chemical reaction to separate them. A physical method alone can separate the mixtures.
अच्छा सो वॉट ए मिक्सचर इज दैट इन अ मिक्सचर द इंडिविजुअल सब्सटेंसेज रिटेन द प्रॉपर्टीज दे हैव दे रिटेन द केमिकल एंड फिजिकल प्रॉपर्टीज ठीक है दे डोंट चेंज द केमिकल प्रॉपर्टीज they retain the chemical and physical properties uh what that basically means is that like if you if you mix uh, sand and water then even in that mixture the water has still exactly has the same properties and the sand pretty much still has exactly the same properties they, i mean it's not it's not like they generate a third property in a chemical reaction in a chemical reaction everything changes in a chemical reaction uh, if you have a chemical reaction happening like h2 and o2 you're mixing them and you're reacting them together uh, everything changes h2 is a gas o2 is also a gas and all of a sudden they turn they react together and they form another compound which is h2o and that's a liquid so when a chemical reaction happens pretty much everything changes it's a completely new substance with completely new sets of properties but in a mixture the properties the individual properties are still there theek hai sand would still be behaving as a sand uh, and water would be still behaving as a water even if it's a it's a mixture theek hai is that clear clear amna Asida, Sanim. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Asa, so um, starting with the first one, okay, the first one. Uh, so you're going to have all sorts of substances. Uh, the first one is you have an insoluble solute, plus some solvent, and the example is uh, sand and water. So there's something that's insoluble. so the example is sand and water so how many different how many what would you do how would you separate them can you even tell me the first method decanting so we just pour out the water okay so the first one is uh, you could use decanting uh decanting is let's say you take water from a river and it's muddy water and you want to separate it so the water is uh, all the sand or and or the mud is uh, is suspended and what you can do is you, uh, you can allow it to settle down theek okay, hai so allow large sand particles to settle down so So you just keep it for a few days, so after after a couple of days, what's going to happen is that uh, all of the sand particles would eventually all settle down at the bottom. Not all of them, but most of them. So these particles would start to. um not a perfect way but it's going to settle down and you can simply pour pour the solvent out so h2 a liquid liquid water simply pours off theek hai that's what you do in a, in a number of places uh so uh, so water is poured off uh, what's the second me method for separating sand and water filtration theek hai filtration the more obvious one that's filtration uh so just do filtration i uh, said so what happens in filtration you take a funnel theek hai let's say we have 
we have a funnel and and there is going to be a filter paper inside it and let's say there's a beaker at the bottom uh, so the sand like if you if you add sand and, and uh, water So the sand particles would all get stuck in the filter paper. That's that's a filter paper. And the water would obviously, it's going to come out. And you'll collect the water at the bottom. So what name is given to this thing that's collected at the bottom? Like technically, what would you call it? The gist of it. Need not the distillate. That's in distillation. This is known as the filtrate. And that thing over here, that's trapped over here. That's that's your residue. Okay, so it's it's called uh, this is filtration. And uh, remember, in filtration, you you get two things, and uh, one of them is the filtrate, and the other one is called the called the residue. So the sand is the residue and the water is the filtrate in this case. TK, is this clear? And then you have, uh, so that's that's about sand and water and uh, there's a third one which is which is for suspensions. Actually, we're running out of time, TK. So the third one is about is about suspensions uh, and I'm going to explain what suspensions are. Uh, this method is known as uh, centrifuging. Which is followed by decanting, let's say. Now, uh, suspensions are when the insoluble particles are very tiny. So sometimes what happens is that the the substance is, is insoluble, the solid particles are insoluble, but they're too tiny, uh, they're too small, so that they don't actually settle at the bottom. And uh, they're too small that they even pass through filter paper as well. Uh, they might be too small that even filtration would probably not work and you would need a filter paper that's that has, uh, I mean, you would have to double or triple the filter paper so that you can easily block the uh, that happens with muddy water for example if you have a very muddy water uh, sometimes the particles are too tiny that the that they form a suspension and the tiny particles they just remain suspended you can actually see them they're not dissolved but the tiny particles refuse to actually come down at the bottom you can see like muddy water you can see the particles you can see the, the water is muddy but you can't uh, but the particles are not settling down so in that case what you do is you you and your blood is one example of of a suspension so in that case what you do is you take a let's say you take a take a test tube and what you do is you spin it and you spin it really really fast so, so let's say, uh, so they start to spin this thing. When you spin it, what would eventually happen is that all the suspended particles, like if, if you're traveling around a corner uh, in a car, you go to one side. And that is exactly what's going to happen to the particles as well. All the particles would be pushed to one side. So slowly, all the particles would get pushed to one side. So you would have to force them to settle down by spinning them very, very fast. So there are different devices known as centrifuging devices that do that. Uh, 
and it especially works for blood like if you go for a blood test i mean that's how they separate the blood into different part because a lot of particles in your blood are completely suspended they're so tiny that uh, i mean they're not soluble but they're very tiny and they just remain suspended in the in the blood okay so that's when you do centrifuging so that you force the insoluble particles to actually settle down okay is this clear ठीक है क्लियर है यस सर चलिए लेट्स लेट्स कंटिन्यू टुमारो ठीक है दैट्स द फर्स्ट वन वी डिड तो लेट्स कंटिन्यू विद द रेस्ट टुमारो देन ठीक है चलिए एनी क्वेश्चंस नहीं है तो वील कंटिन्यू टुमारो देन ओके देन अल्लाह हाफिज़